visit thrive50plus.com. Mount Kenya Safari Club. Having stayed there, it is truly a time capsule, the TARDIS to an era of bygone luxury and romantic decadence. Nothing can prepare you for the magic and memories that you will experience when you visit Mount Kenya's Camelot. From its front gate to its sprawling 100 acres, the Safari Lodge Club is an expedition in itself. The Fairmont Mount Kenya Safari Club isn't just a glamorous old school Hollywood hangout, it's got a huge heart too. In 1967, once owner William Holden and some friends set up a conservation reserve and an animal orphanage on the property, embarking on an ambitious breeding program to save the critically endangered mountain bongo. Today, when his large white-striped antelope were once even more sought after among trophy hunters in the Big Five, there are now 64 safe and sound in the reserve. You can meet, feed and even pet some of them amongst a multitude of other exotic creatures being cared for at the orphanage. Think African lynx, porcupine, forest cats, cheetahs, and a couple of llamas over from Peru. Not quite an authentic safari, but certainly a meaningful Fairmont-funded cause. Here, you can spend your mornings horseback riding across the hills and through the ancient woodlands of Mount Kenya National Park, spotting white zebras en route. You can spend your afternoons fishing for trout in the lake alongside prehistoric looking marabou stork and peacocks. Dog lovers can even explore the club's vast grounds, which houses an actual maze, some tennis courts, and a spa that's currently undergoing a complete facelift. You'll be accompanied by two young Labradors, an unusual hotel amenity by anyone's standards. If you wander into the bar at the Fairmont Mount Kenya Safari Club these days, you'll not see Ernest Hemingway telling tall tales from a day's big game hunt, nor Ava Gardner downing gimlets in an attempt to forget her failed marriage to Frank Sinatra. And you won't have to fight pet leopards for a seat. However, the whole place just drips with memorabilia. In the club's heyday in the 1960s, all these things were commonplace. When Hollywood heartthrob William Holden and his partners oil billionaire Ray Ryan and Swiss financier Carl Hirschman ran the place as the most elite private members club in the world. Membership was by invitation only. Some of the members included Bing Crosby, David Lean, Charlie Chaplin, Steve McQueen, Conrad Hilton, Winston Churchill and the Maharaja of Jafar. Stephanie Powers and John Hurt still keep houses adjoining the club. Holden fell in love with Kenya during the hunting safaris of the 50s, and he was well known for his practical joking in the bar, such as snakes hidden in the bottom of a peanut tin. He was also a very hands-on manager, keeping an eye on the bar and its going on via telescope from his private villa. The club's beauty includes sweeping highland forests that lead into dense, thick lits of bamboo, while rich clusters of bird life and herds of waterbuck roam nearby. Manicured lawns sweep down to a pool, past flower-filled ponds and then onto the slopes, where they climb for kilometres to the snow-dusted peak known locally as Kiranyaga. The club is built directly on the equator, its line cutting straight through the main bar, following the curve of the National Park before running straight along the seventh hole of the club's petite nine-hole golf course. Philippe Corvier, the hotel's gregarious general manager, says, the club's 120 rooms are imposing and royally decorated, many with gargantuan fireplaces lit each evening to stave off the crisp mountain cold. His aim is to bring back the passion and the glamour of the club as well as the tradition and he is sparing no detail in his quest. My dream is to bring back the white peacocks that used to roam the grounds, as well as the zebras and even the cheetahs. He also aims to restore the spirit of the club not only as a destination, but also as a place that supports its staff. He believes the Kenyan people have a natural hospitality. Still, for me, the Mount Kenya Safari Club even has a unique luxe take on wildlife spotting. 
On our first day at the club, a surprise call from the front desk suggested we take the following morning's breakfast at the base of the mountain. Three different choices of transport were provided, car, foot and horse. And damn it, if the spirit of the place didn't get the better of me, we found ourselves bouncing around in the back of amiable horses, striding across the grounds where William Holden used to career around on his motorbike with his two pet gibbons, Rudy and Margot, clinging to the bike for dear life. After reaching the airstrip, we trotted to our table, a lavish affair set with silverware. There we sat, dwarfed by the mountain, as armed rangers watched over us and club staff Peter and Joyce whipped up a multi-course extravaganza of birch and muesli, smoked salmon, scrambled eggs and sweet, plump, locally grown pineapples topped off with a Kenyan coffee. On the return journey, as we rode past Holden's villa, I was sure that if he were watching through his telescope now, he'd be pleased with how his pet project had turned out. For the rest of this story, please go to thrive50plus.com. Thrive 50 Plus, a new informative lifestyle magazine for us. Visit thrive50plus.com.